Right now, you can track people with their knowledge or without their knowledge. But is that really an invasion of privacy or is that just new technology? It's important that we be able to look at any place in the world because if trouble strikes, our government has to deal with the situation. We are the eyes of our nation, if you will. You need geospatial intelligence to target bad guys. Mapping to some degree has always been driven by uh, conflict, shall we call it, war. In the face of the Bosnian Serb offensive, another Muslim enclave falls. Crisis in the Balkans. In the summer of 1995, a wave of ethnic cleansing wiped out the Muslim populations in villages in eastern Bosnia. The shelling continued for a second day. A line of siege was established on the hills around Sarajevo. There are snipers shooting people. Tens of thousands of people were killed. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, you had three separate groups. You had the Croatians, you had enclaves of Serbs, and you had enclaves of Muslims. It was a real mess. Finally, the West decided it had to, it had to iron the situation out by cutting up the country. So this is what the Dayton Accords were all about. Richard Holbrook knew that this was a high-stakes game. Had Dayton failed, it would have meant more war in Bosnia-Herzegovina. We had to figure this out so that everybody gets a fair shake here. I believe that it will not last too long. And the only way to do that was really geospatially. And there's various sources of information that are put in. We brought in this thing called Power Scene. It's a digital... We took digital train elevation data and we overlaid it with imagery. They had a joystick. You could fly over the train, back down into the valley. We were able to get them to agree that yes, this was a majority Muslim village or this was a majority Serb village. Grozda was an isolated enclave, which was populated by Muslims. The Bosnian Muslims wouldn't give up this piece of ground. They demanded secure access to it. And the question is, where would the lines be drawn? Eventually, the solution was to build a road to open a corridor to them. We used power scene to fly a route over the mountains that was far enough away from the Bosnian Serbs that the traffic would not be intercepted or shot at. We needed a wider corridor. Now we had to demonstrate that to the president of Serbia. Milosevic was smart, but he wasn't a field soldier. He'd never walked that terrain. Well, can't we make this more narrow? Why so many kilometers? And I said, well, you can see right here, Mr. President. Here's the mountaintop on one side. Here's the mountaintop on the other. You can't draw a line down the side of a hill like this and have it defensible. They have to have the high ground on either side of this valley. He could see this with real terrain. Ultimately, he couldn't beat the argument. And we had our road, and that's what we needed. This was the first successful use of deployable digital technology in diplomatic negotiations. For the great efforts the United States invested, it was hugely satisfying and emotional to know that we helped end the war. After nearly four years of 250,000 people killed, the people of Bosnia finally have a chance to turn from the horror of war to the promise of peace.